Today I'm going to show you guys a game changing knot that will help you secure your baits right onto your hook. This works especially well for securing soft baits. Stay tuned guys. So I'm going to show you guys how to tie this knot real quick. It's called the egg loop knot and typically people don't really use it. I don't really see many people using it on the surf. I'm going to show you guys how to tie it with this really neon thick thread just so you can see it. But in reality, I'm actually going to be using fluorocarbon line so that the fish can't see it. All right, so we're going to cut off about 14 to 17 inches of line right here just like this. Now I'm going to show you guys with a bigger hook. This is great for, you know, bigger fish, redfish, drum, stuff like that. First thing you're going to do is take the tag end and put it through like this. And now from here, you're going to use your thumb and index finger to pinch right here. And use this finger to wrap. So we're going to wrap this three, four, five, six, seven times. You can do more, but I like to do about seven to ten wraps. Then we're going to take this tag end, put it through the eye this way. It's important that you go this way just a little bit, okay? Now you see this line right here? This line right here is going to go parallel with this line right here. Then we're gonna pinch it and use this to wrap another seven to 10 times. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Then from there, we're gonna pull this, making sure everything is still tight we're gonna pull that. You see this? You see this? This is looking really good. And then from there, tighten. And this is a really strong knot, a lot of wraps on it. And now here's the really awesome part. Look at this. This is where you're gonna put your soft baits in. And this is gonna hold it in nice and secure so it doesn't come off and it holds your soft baits on there really well. And all it takes is just to learn this one knot. It looks a little bit complicated, but it's actually really simple to tie. And then we've got the tag end right here that we're gonna cut off. First of all, I'm gonna tighten that end. And then we can clip it. That's perfect. That's how you do it. The egg loop knot. Shout out to whoever invented this knot. It's been really useful for me on the surf. How do I attach this to my actual line? We're gonna put it over like this and we're gonna tie an overhand knot. Just like that. Now with this tag end, we're gonna cut the tag end off again. And that's our knot right there. So now, there's a couple of ways that you can attach this to your actual rig. The first one being, uh, you can do a Carolina rig or a fish finder rig, or you can do a high-low rig. And I'm gonna show you how to attach it to a high-low rig. So this is our custom rod here. This is brand new. It's all carbon fiber all the way from the bottom to the top. It's a nine foot two rod. And the special part is it breaks down to five pieces. So when it breaks down, it, it, it's about this big. This means you can travel anywhere with it. You can take it with you on your airplane ride, on your backpack. You can take it on the train. You can take it literally anywhere and go fishing on the beach anywhere you go. And this thing is nice and long too, so I can cast it really far. Another really awesome feature about this rod is that it can cast three and a half ounces. That's really great because some beaches have waves that are a little bit bigger. The fact that you can use a three and a half ounce sinker with a small rod like this is really fantastic because it means you can fish a lot of different kinds of beaches. Anyways, I tied it up on here. This is what's called a mortician rig. And if you guys don't know what that kind of rig is, I show you guys exactly how to tie that rig on uh, one of our previous episodes. I'll link that in the description. I'll probably put a card at the top right here. You'll be able to click it and see it, how to, how to tie it. At the core of it, a mortician rig is a really heavy leader line tied on a swivel, two-way swivel, two more knots, and then a clip swivel at the bottom to hold the sinker. Now the specialty about these two knots here is that you'll be able to attach, this is what's called a snood, and we'll put this through here like this. Now of course I'm going to be using like real line, not this fake line. This is just so you can see it. And when you attach it like this, it can just spin freely. That's one of the main benefits is that it spins freely. Another main benefit is that you can have a really heavy main line right here so that you don't get like broken off or you don't get it snagged. You can save your sinker from getting lost. But then the snood that you tie can be a really lightweight line 
so that smaller fish and fish that are really finicky and really picky, they won't see the line. That's a really awesome benefit. But one of my favorite benefits is that if this line gets bitten off, I have another snood ready to go, ready to tie. I didn't have to tie a whole brand new rig. If you want to learn how to tie the mortician rig, I recommend you check out that video that I made recently. It's a really great tutorial and I hope it can help you. So I've already tied the snoods on these ones. These are actually our rig spools where I hold all of my snoods and all of my already used rigs or rigs to just store. It's a great solution to store your rigs so they don't get tangled up. It's really awesome because you just hook it into the foam and then the other tag end, you just put it into one of these notches right here. It's super convenient, real big game changer for me. We have these on our website as well. But I've got two different size hooks here. I've got a small little hook here, and I've got a little bit of a bigger medium sized hook here. And I'm gonna use one of each. Now the benefit of this is that with the mortician rig, I can use one small hook, one big hook. I just love how versatile it is. Now this is 15 pound line, this is 30 pound line. So my 30 pound is gonna be a lot less likely to break. And the 15 pound line is light enough so that I can catch finicky fish. Perfect rig for me. There we go. That's the first one. We're gonna put the small hook on the top and then we'll put the medium sized hook on the bottom. Here we go. Small hook. Medium hook. Now in case anything happens and this does get bitten off by like a bluefish or something with sharp teeth, I've got another one in our rig spool, ready to go. Just got to retie it real quick. I don't have to retie the whole rig. Now this is really nice because they all have egg loop knots on them. Meaning I can put soft baits on each of these hooks. You see that? That is such a cool knot. I love different kinds of knots. I love tying different kinds of rigs and just trying new things. And oftentimes when you try new things and you find success, that's how you become a better fisherman. That's how you become, you know, able to find more fish, catch more things, bring more things home, and really just, it's a great learning experience to just keep coming out here and trying different things. Now for my other rod here, I typically like to fish with multiple rods. Ah, this is a 10 foot rod, a little bit longer than my custom rod, but I want a little bit of a longer rod as well. This is the same egg loop knot right here. See that? Except uh, this time I tied it on a fish finder rig. The difference between this is the sinker is above the hook, the high-low rig, the sinker is below the hook. This way, if a fish pulls it, the sinker stays in one place and it's very unsuspecting. When the fish pulls it and runs with it, it has no idea it's on an actual line versus that other high-low rig, when a fish pulls it, it'll feel the sinker. This is more for bigger fish. So I put a bigger hook on it. This is a bigger hook and I'm gonna use probably some soft shrimp or some soft clams on here. Now it's time to set up and go fishing. Yeah. I love bringing these bikes down to the beach because you get to a really nice remote spot that no one's here. The fish are very unsuspecting. They're not used to seeing a bunch of hooks. If that's not good luck, I don't know what is. It's always these little things that help like just having a rod holder that has a little holder on here that can hold your bait, hold your sinkers. Because when you're on the water, you don't want anything to touch salt water. Things like this little belt that holds my bait, you know, save the time for important things like catching fish. All right, now let's put some bait on this. I always, always peel my shrimps because it's softer. The shell around it, sometimes I find that it's like harder for fish to like bite through that. Now, I'm gonna put it through this loop first, right? So now it's attached by the loop and by the hook at the same time. So it's a lot harder for this actual shrimp to come off the hook, especially when you're casting. When you're casting really hard, you don't want that to fly off. If you're casting it really hard and really far, it's gonna go out there. If you see your shrimp fly off in the middle of it, you're gonna have to reel the whole thing back in, put it back on there and recast it. And that's a real pain. So there's multiple ways to use this little egg loop knot. See that loop? Put the shrimp in the loop and pull. And this way, it just stays on the hook like that. Next, we're gonna put the actual shrimp on the hook like this. So we've got two pieces of bait on here. One in the loop, one on the hook. Now let's sling this out there. Now we gotta watch this line. 
because I have a feeling it's going to get bitten soon because I casted it in the perfect spot. Okay, now we've got this fish finder rig. And with this one, I'm going to want to put a little bit bigger of a piece of shrimp on there. Man, this is like perfect size for eating too. I, I always feel bad about using it for bait because I, you know, this looks perfect. I love shrimps. Let's put that loop through here. Cinch it down. And then we're going to attach the bottom half just like that. So now it's attached by the loop and it's attached by the hook. Let's give it a cast. Oh, f it just came off. Damn, I think it came off. Darn it, took all my bait. All right, maybe there's something here. Sure. All right, we got something on. I'm hoping it's a dinner fish. If I can catch four or five big whiting, I'm happy. Oh, I see what it is. It's a little shark. Not what I want, but it got close. It could have bitten this off really easily. Just didn't. This is a bonnet head shark not to be mistaken for a hammerhead shark. A lot of amateur people think that this would be a hammerhead, but you can tell it's different because look at the head shape. It's a kind of a shovel head, not flat. And these loops work really well. We'll just put the whole shrimp on this one. I bet you it's another shark. No, it's a bluefish. Okay, cool. I haven't seen a bluefish in a while. Well, if we were to make ceviche, this would be a really yummy fish, but that's not what I'm looking for. I want some whiting. I want four fat whiting. That's what I want today. Yahoo! I'm glad I was holding the rod for that. I think it's a whiting. Come on, yes. Yeah! Now this is the fish that I'm looking for. And if there's one, there's usually more than one. But look at this. The egg loop knot, it held the shrimp on pretty well. See that? Not bad. First fish. Put this in a cooler. I was in really close. Four fish look good. That's two more, right? Oh! Oh yeah. That's a good one. Man, I, I really love the action of this rod. It's so lightweight. I can you can kind of see it swimming around too. Like to the left and to the right. What is it? What is it? Oh, nice, it's a whiting. It's really fun to fight it on a small light rod like that. That's another good one. We're gonna keep this. So these egg loop knots are perfect for soft baits like shrimp, clams, and these ghost shrimp right here. They're so soft that anything can just peck it off really easily. But with this egg loop knot, it helps hold it on the hook. So what I'll do here is I'll put the ghost shrimps through this loop right here. Cinch it down. Now the ghost shrimps are secured on. 
And then I'll put a piece of shrimp like this. And now I've got a combination of ghost shrimp and regular shrimp on one hook. Yeah, yeah, just another whiting. It feels big on the light rod. Well, little, little do a lot of people know, but these fish are really, really tasty. They're actually one of my favorite fish to eat because they're so soft and delicate. The meat is very white and flaky and really sweet. And I've got a really special way I'm gonna prepare them. I'm gonna butterfly them and put some uh, olive oil, salt, pepper on top and just butterfly grill it. Ah, it's gonna be so good. I'm really loving using these little hooks right now. These whitings, their mouths aren't that big, so you don't want to have huge hooks. Smaller hooks are better. And I'm really loving these egg loop knots because it's just holding so well. You know, it's just fun to come out here and try different things. Doing the same thing over and over again just gets kind of boring sometimes. It's nice to switch things up. And I'm really not even casting really far. I'm just casting like, see where these waves are breaking? Right behind that. They're really close in right now because it's a high tide. Oh yeah, definitely on. I was in the middle of retying my other line. Man, I really love using this rod because it, it's so sensitive. I can feel every little shake. Yeah. Oh, it's a bluefish. Oh my God, I don't want to get my finger bitten off. I'm going to use the pliers for this one. Be careful trying to take the hooks out of these because their teeth are really sharp, even the small ones. I wouldn't put my finger near its mouth if I had the choice, so I'm just going to use the pliers. I love these Gomexus pliers. Look at those teeth. Look at that. Did you see that? Bye. Those little guys are super aggressive. made my hook a little bit smaller, and now I'm catching those little things that are nipping off my baits. Hope it's still on here. Oh. There we go. It's enough for dinner now. This is actually working really great, watch this. I'm actually just gonna have the loop hold the bait the entire time. I'm not gonna put anything on the actual hook. So look, I'll put the shrimp through the loop Pull it tight. And then this, if anything sucks this in, it'll also suck the hook in. And for this next one, I'm gonna do a piece of shrimp on the hook, and then a ghost shrimp, which like, if you didn't have this egg loop, how are you even supposed to put something like this on without like the threading? And the threading works really well, but if I didn't bring it, I wanna just use the actual egg loop knot to hold it. So I'm gonna fold it over in half, put it through. Look at that, it's like tied on there now. So I found these ghost shrimp earlier by pumping them out of the actual beach, like the sand. You'll see all these little holes and those little holes are spurting up water and like little pieces of debris. I always wondered what it was. So I got myself one of these pumps and I started pumping them out and what do you know, there are these huge ghost shrimp that come out of the water and they work great as bait. It's kind of hard to put it on the actual hook. Hopefully these egg loop knots are uh, gonna hold it well. All right, this one feels like it's sticking to the ground. 
hope it's not a stingray. All right, I got it off. Come on, let's see what this is. It's always exciting to hook something because you don't know what it is. This is definitely something bigger than the last one. I hope it's not just a sinker stuck in the ground. It's not really pulling back too much. It just feels really heavy. I have a feeling it's a stingray because it feels like it gets stuck into the sand like, like that. No, I hooked the, I hooked the whiting by its side. I thought it was a stingray for sure. That is pretty crazy. Hooked it on its side. Sorry, dude, but I gotcha. Ugh. Into the bag it goes. It's hard to manage all your stuff at once while you're fishing on the beach because the salt water and the tides, they just come in real quick and they'll mess you up if you're not prepared. All right, let's check what's going on with this one. This one hasn't gotten a bite. It's either no bait on there or I'm in the wrong spot. No bait. I like hooking it onto the hook and having one in the loop as well. It just doubles my chances. Oh yeah, yes, yes, yes. All right, I feel the head shakes on this one too. Hope I double up, oh yeah. Another whiting. And at this point I've moved spots three times. But when you find them, you find them. So if you can't find them, try another spot. Don't give up just quite yet. So I just casted this one out and I got one. That was really close in too. In fact, casting it further out there, I wasn't getting anything. Just really close in was catching all my fish so far. Oh, it was on. I set the hook and the fish just started running with it. I think it's swimming towards me right now. All right. They're all about the same size today, but this is a perfect size, one fish per person, and we're having a dinner party tomorrow night, so this is a perfect time to catch these fish. All right, we got plenty of fish. I have a dinner party coming up tomorrow night. So what I'm gonna do is go back to my kitchen, butterfly them out and get it all ready to eat. If you guys love beach fishing, check out my website, hayskipperfishing.com. We provide the ultimate beach fishing experience from rigs down to rods, down to bait, sinkers. We got everything you need. Check it out. So it's really easy to butterfly a fish. We're gonna need a pair of scissors and a fillet knife. Step one. Remove all the fins. I'm just gonna cut that off with scissors. Now there's two ways of butterflying it. You can either have it from the bottom butterfly or from the top. And this is what both look like. This is from the top. This is from the bottom. See the difference? One head is like this, one head is like this. So from the top, we're just gonna stick our, our fillet knife right by the spine right here, by the head. I'm just gonna fillet it down, keeping that knife close to that spine bone the whole time to get the maximum amount of meat. So simple. Now we're gonna go all the way down. Then we're gonna do the other side. Cut it through its head like this. 
Now from the bottom right here, we're gonna make an incision and cut the spine out now. Guts out. So we can just eat around the rib bones or we can actually remove the rib bones. But personally, I like to eat it with the bone because it just tastes better on the meat. And we'll just put it directly on the grill like this. Five more minutes and then we're ready. Mm. So we got octo. Here's the here's the whiting. We grilled with what's called like this is called tabule. Tabule, like yeah. Parsley, garlic, um, tomatoes. Perfect. We've got olive salad, olive stuffed with anchovies, beets, pickled red Onion. onions, um, tomatoes, cherry tomatoes, French bread, oh, and we're just yes. dipping this bread in olive oil, putting the fish on there. We have steak and octopus. It's a feast. 